All right, welcome back to a brand new Spigot plugin tutorial. In this tutorial, I'm going to teach you all how to connect to a MySQL database server for your Spigot plugin. The reason why you might want to do this is if you want to build plugins that can have persistent data, let's say if you're working with user coordinates, if you're building some kind of set home command, you want to save this to a database so later on you can retrieve it. Okay, databases are optimized for situations like this. So what we'll do is we'll connect to a MySQL database server. Now, uh, make sure that you have an actual MySQL server. Uh, you can either install MySQL server on your computer and use it locally, or you can use a managed uh, MySQL database server. Typically, you have to pay for those, but uh, I'm assuming that you all already have MySQL server installed. You know what MySQL is, and you just need to know how to connect to it. So that that this video will show you how to do that. So what we'll be doing is we'll be uh, installing two additional Java packages. We're going to be using the ORM Lite library. And this library is going to basically allow us to uh, use an object relational mapper to map our Java classes into actual database tables. If you're not familiar with ORMs, I would highly recommend you actually learn about ORMs because they are very useful and they're typically used in the industry you'll very rarely see projects where they use an actual uh they'll use like an actual regular uh you know database uh driver package that you have to write the actual database uh query language right rms are very nice you don't have to worry about writing actual sql statements uh they'll take care of mapping the regular objects into an actual database table and its columns so you don't have to worry about doing stuff like you know select these columns from this table ORMs provide you high level API to, you know, pr they provide you like all the methods and properties that you would need to interact with the database, whether it's querying data, updating data, deleting data, whatever it is. Okay. Um, so let's go ahead and go into IntelliJ and we're going to go into our palm.xml file. So right over here, palm.xml. And what you'll want to do is right over here to dependencies, you're going to want to add two dependencies. So we're going to add the dependency for ORM Lite, the core. So to get the actual dependency, uh, you can either just go to their website, ormlite.com. You can click on local repository and you can go ahead and download the version, the core version. You can download the jar and then you also must make sure you download the JDBC, JDBC version as well. Okay, you need those two. Uh, but we're not going to be uh, downloading those manually. We'll just go to the Maven repository. And I'll leave links in the description, so don't worry. And you'll type in ORM Lite. Okay? And then you're going to want to make sure you download the one for ORM Lite Core. So I'm going to just open this in a new tab. And you want to make sure you download uh, the JDBC one as well. Okay? So we'll open that in a new tab as well. And then what you'll do here is you'll make sure you click on version 6.1 or you'll select the latest version at the current time of you watching this video so right now the latest version is 6.1 so i'll click on this one and you also want to make sure that you are selecting the same version as well so you'll see that right over here orm late jdbc the version is 6.1 so make sure you select that as well you want to make sure those two versions match okay so we'll use uh, these two versions so i'll go ahead and just copy the xml right over here and don't worry, all the code is in the description, so you can just go ahead and copy the uh, copy the XML file from the code if you need it. So I'll paste in the ORM Lite Core right over here, and I'll just copy the ORM Lite JDBC XML as well, and I'll paste it right over here. Okay, now we're going to go ahead and uh, do one more thing. We're going to go ahead and load all the Maven changes, so on the right side, we'll click on the Maven icon. And then underneath external libraries, we should see that we do have the uh, packages right over here under external libraries, which is good. Okay. Now, here's another issue that we need to make sure we address first. We need to make sure that we uh, are shading our plugins. So that way, when we package our plugin, it will actually include all of the external uh, dependencies that we are uh, that we are working with, right? Because if you don't do that, you're going to run into an issue where... Um, the uh, the packages or the classes that you are referencing are not going to be found so we need to make sure we 
uh, you need to make sure that you shade your dependencies. And I'll show you how to do that. So um, all you have to do is just copy this part over here. And again, like I said, I'll leave the I'll leave the exact file to the pom.xml so you know what to copy. And it'll all be in the repository, okay? But you're going to go ahead and just paste this over here. So this is basically just the Maven Shade plugin. And this will take care of shading all of your plugins so that when you package everything, they will all be included. Okay, so just make sure you paste this in. Okay, like I said, the link to the XML file will be in the description on GitHub, so don't worry. So I'll reload my Maven changes, and then we should be good to go. All right, so now uh, what we need to do is we need to actually set up our uh, ORM light so we can actually use it to interact with the database. So how do we do that? Well, what we need to do is we need to create, first we need to create a class that is going to represent our database table. So what I'll do is I'll create a new package and I'll call this, uh, let's call this, uh, I guess we'll call this entities, okay? And I'll create a new uh, class and I'll call this user. So this will represent a user on our server, okay? And then what we'll do is we'll use the database table uh, decorator or annotation. In Java, they typically call these annotations. Um, so we'll call this, uh, we'll, we'll invoke this, so database table. Okay, and this will be imported from the package right up top over here, as you can see. And then what we want to do is we want to set the table name to whatever we want. And I'll just call this users. Okay. And then what we'll do is we'll define a properties or fields that we need. So for the user, I'll probably need a couple of fields. So I think we'll need, well, first let's get a primary key. So let's do database field. Let's use that annotation and let's set uh, unique to true like this. Okay. So by doing that, that will ensure that this is in fact a unique uh, value. And actually, let me also do this ID equals true as well. Actually, you know what? I think we could just do ID equals true and that should be fine. So let's set the data type to int and we'll call this ID. Okay. So this will be a primary key. We'll go ahead and set up another database field and we will go ahead and set this type to be a string. We'll grab the unique ID because remember every single Minecraft user has a unique ID. Okay. And then we'll get one more field and this will be the username. Okay, and then we'll go ahead and set up the constructor. So we need to have a no R constructor. So this is uh, perfectly fine. And then we are pretty much done with our user entity. So now what we will do is we'll go into our plugin class, my plugin, and I'll just show you how we can actually connect to the database. So I'll go ahead into the constructor or I'll implement the constructor. And then what we want to do is we first want to uh, get our database URL. So we'll declare a variable called database URL. And we need to follow this format in order to connect to our MySQL server. So this is basically just the JDBC MySQL formatted string to actually connect to the MySQL server. So it's always going to start with JDBC colon MySQL and then colon forward slash forward slash. And then you're going to do uh, test user. So this is going to be the username and password combo. So since I have authentication on my local MySQL server, I'm going to pass in the username. So test user is the username and then the password test user one, two, three. Now, if you don't have authentication for your MySQL server, you can just remove this part. And then the next thing that you would pass is the host name of the SQL server. So since we're using localhost, we would pass in localhost like that. But let me just go ahead and paste in the user and password and then we'll do at localhost. And then from here, we want to we want to specify the database name that we want to connect to. So that will just simply be whatever it is that we want to call it. So I'll just call this uh, Minecraft spigot server DB. You can call it whatever you want. OK, we do need to make sure that we are actually creating this database before we can actually call it or before we can actually connect to it, because otherwise it's going to throw an error. So you need to make sure you have this database created. OK, which I'll show you how to do that in just a second. But now what you want to do 
is we want to go ahead and use the connection source class. So we'll uh, declare a variable called connection source. The data type will be connection source. And we're going to create a new JDBC connection source right over here. And you're going to pass in the database URL like that. Okay. So uh, it's going to complain about unhandled SQL exception. So we'll just go ahead and we'll add the throws SQL exception clause over here. Okay. And you need to make sure that you import the classes up top over here. IntelliJ does that, IntelliJ does that for us automatically. So we don't have to worry about that. Okay, so this will take care of connecting to the database. Now we need to go ahead and create what's called a DAO, a DAO, which just stands for Data Access Object. And Data Access Objects, it's pretty much just a pattern that you typically follow to isolate the uh, the application layer from the uh, from the persistent layer. And what that means is, for example, our application layer would be the Spigot plugin, right? And our data layer, the persistent layer, would be the database, right? And the DAO separates, uh, you know, the application layer from the database layer. And it's, it acts like a middleman to allow the application to interact with the data layer, okay? This is a common pattern in Java. So if you've used, uh, if, if you've used Spring Boot before or any other, uh, you know, library or framework in Java, you'll tip, you've typically heard of DAOs before, okay? But we need to create a DAO. And it's really easy to do that. All we need to do is just use the DAO class, and that's going to be imported up top here. And then you'll go ahead and uh, pass in, because this is a generic, you'll pass in the type. So in our case, it'll be user. So let's import that up top here. And then comma, and then you want to pass in uh, the, the type of our ID. In our case, it's integer. So integer like that. Okay. And then we'll go ahead and name this user DAO. And then we'll go ahead and reference DAO manager. So that'll be imported from ORM Lite up top over here. And then you'll go ahead and call the create DAO method. You'll pass in the connection source. And then you'll pass in user.class. So now you have the user DAO, which will allow you to reference it and then you can go ahead and uh, call methods that will allow you to interact with the user table okay and this is the beauty of ORMs so we don't have to worry about writing any raw SQL statements we can use the DAO manager right we can use the user DAO to actually um, interact with the database table okay but what we'll do is we'll go ahead and reference table users so this is a class that's also going to be imported from the RM light package. And you want to go ahead and call this create table method, pass in the connection source, and then pass in user.class. So this will actually create the table. You must do this in order for the table to be created. Okay. So what we'll do is let's test everything out. So let me go over to my uh, my PowerShell. Let me log into my SQL server. So I'm in my SQL server right over here. Okay. And what I'll do is I'll go ahead and let me package everything first. So let's go over to Maven. Let's package our plugin. And we can see that there's no issues. So let's go ahead and reload our server. Okay. And you're going to see that we get an error. And of course, it makes sense because like I mentioned earlier, we don't have the database created, so we must make sure we create the database right over here. You can see it says unknown database Minecraft underscore spigot underscore server underscore DB. So we must uh, we must create this database. So what we'll do is we'll go into our SQL server and I'll just type create database and then the name of the database. So that will be called Minecraft spigot server DB. So I'll paste that there. There you go. Let's type use and then the name of the database that we just created. Okay. And then you'll see that there are no tables. It's an empty set. So uh, we can just reload the plugin because we didn't really change anything in the code. So let's just reload the plugin. And you'll see that there are no more errors. And you'll actually see that we have some logging over here. It says creating table users. Okay. And then it logs create executed create table statement change your rows. 
And then if I look over in my SQL Server, if I type show tables again, you'll see that we now have the users table. That's good. That means that we now have the table in our database and we can start using this to actually um, to actually interact with our database table. OK, so in the next episode, I will show you how we can create a, uh, a custom like plugin whenever the user joins. Uh, we'll create a record for them in the database if it doesn't exist. And if that record does exist, we'll just tell the user, welcome back to the server. So that's going to be a way how we can tell if a user joins the server. So that is going to be pretty much it for this tutorial. Like I said, all the code will be in the description. It will be There will be a link to a GitHub repository where you can get the code. And if you have any questions, you can feel free to join my Discord server and ask for help over there. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you all in the next episode. Peace out.